chemical properties describe how likely a substance is to engage in a chemical reaction with another substance. And what we're looking at is whether the atoms of one substance are likely to rearrange with the atoms of another substance. The ability to oxidize is a chemical property, but it's really hard to tell if something will oxidize just by looking at it. The chemical change that occurs when something does oxidize is called oxidation. And flammability and combustibility are two subsets of the ability to oxidize that are considered chemical properties. If I hold a flame to three substances, the first one doesn't light because it's water and it will not oxidize. The second one doesn't light easily, but the third one, if I barely hold a flame near it, it lights very quickly. So it's considered combustible. It likes to react with oxygen super quickly. The second substance there will react with oxygen just under certain circumstances. So it's considered combustible. That second substance is called kerosene. And what happens is that the C12H26 molecules react with the oxygen molecules to form water and carbon dioxide. So the atoms rearrange, which is why it's a chemical reaction. We all know that wood is combustible because it will burn and so is its bark, but it's not considered flammable like the paper is because the paper will light very, very quickly and react with oxygen very rapidly, as does benzene, which is also considered flammable. That's why it's in torches. Copper is not considered to be flammable and neither is iron wool. It is combustible though it will burn, but magnesium is flammable because the slightest little spark will cause it to burn rapidly. Aluminum on the other hand, not flammable. While rapid oxidation is really fun to watch when things are combustible or flammable, Oxidation at the slower pace is what causes food to rot, things to rust, and things to tarnish. So our food rots because it's exposed to oxygen, as do pennies that tarnish. During slower oxidation reactions, the atoms still rearrange. Like in rust, we have iron and oxygen combined to form this iron oxide. And in tarnish, silver oxygen and hydrogen sulfide rearrange to form silver sulfide and water. This slow process of oxidation is also why we rarely find elements in their pure form on Earth. They're all oxidized in rocks, like silicon dioxide is what sand is made of, and iron and copper and manganese all oxidized too. General reactivity is also a chemical property, and we have sort of patterns on the periodic table where the sides are a little bit more reactive, the middle is kind of reactive, the far right is not reactive. The chemical changes are the types of chemical reactions that atoms can participate in, and there's a whole bunch of different ones, combustion, decomposition, neutralization, hydrolysis, redox, and displacement, but every element and compound basically has its own types of things that it likes to react with. The general pattern of reactivity on the periodic table is that left likes to react with the right. And so metals are on the left hand of the periodic table and acids are chemicals that contain hydrogen and elements from the right hand side of the periodic table, which is non-metals like sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. Things that fizz in an acid test tell us that they contain metals like the sodium bicarbonate and the calcium in this eggshell and the seashell. This limestone also has calcium in it. And these things like copper and this steel wool don't react very aggressively, but the magnesium fizzes like crazy. The first two columns on the periodic table are called the reactive metals, and they react aggressively in these acid tests. Things that react with alkalines or bases are typically going to be non-metals because bases are chemicals with a metal and a hydroxide, so they like to react with the opposite side of the table too. pH is the chemical property that describes how acidic or basic a substance is by measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions within the solution. What usually happens as a chemical change is called a neutralization reaction, where an acid with a very low pH and a base with a very high pH combine with each other, the atoms rearrange, and we get water with a neutral pH and a salt made out of the metal and non-metal from the leftovers. The chemical property of corrosivity is the ability of one substance to basically erode or eat away at another substance. And the chemical change that occurs is called corrosion when the material is actually destroyed and unusable. If I take this piece of copper and put it in vinegar for a little while, you can see the little bit of black that starts to form. And over time, this would render a piece of copper completely useless. The steel wool is like just completely annihilated by the vinegar extremely quickly because vinegar is very corrosive to steel. And the vinegar is also lightly corrosive to this magnesium. If I left it in there for a couple of days, it would be pretty much gone. Engineers have to strongly consider corrosivity when selecting substances to build things out of, as all substances have a chemical weakness for water, acids, bases, and even salts. 
property of toxicity describes how poisonous something is to living things. Something is considered highly toxic if great harm is caused by a very small dose. For example, botulism will kill you at one nanogram per kilogram of body weight. Something is considered to have a low toxicity if it takes a whole lot of it to cause any harm to you. For example, water will kill you at 90 grams per kilogram and sucrose sugar uh, will also kill you at about 30 grams per kilogram. But the key here is that everything technically is toxic. The danger is in the dose. I've always hated this definition of chemical properties, but I thought that we would make sure to touch on it, that chemical properties can only be tested by actually attempting to conduct the chemical reaction. Like exposing oxygen is the only way to know if something can cause oxidation. Um, you have to expose things to acids and bases to figure out what their pH is. You have to expose things to water and other chemicals to figure out what the corrosivity situation is. And you have to expose things to living things to figure out if they're toxic.